This video is sponsored by Keeps. This is my homemade truck camper. I built it from the ground up about four years ago, give or take. I had a lot of fun building it. I designed it to sit in the bed of my pickup so I could travel somewhere while pulling a trailer with a car on it and always have a place to sleep and poop right behind me at all times, wherever I go, which was nice. But while I did have a lot of fun building it, yeah, I only used it twice. Granted, one of those trips was from Missouri to Washington, D.C., to Atlanta, Georgia, back to Missouri again. That's still only one of two trips. And now it's firmly in my way in the shop and I'm never gonna use it again. So I'm going to take it apart. Ugh. And before you suggest that I give it away or sell it to someone that could have a use for it, remember that I built this myself from the ground up. So I don't want to do that because if this were to break in any way, shape or form, not that I think it would and cause someone else harm or injury or even frustration, I don't think I could live with that guilt. So it's going to stay in my hands and I'm going to take it apart. Ah! I'm going to dismantle it into recyclable materials, trash, and maybe some stuff that I'll keep around. And this presents me with a unique opportunity because when I built this thing about four years ago, I didn't record building any of it. So now I can show you how I put it together by taking it apart. And through the power of hindsight, we can examine all the mistakes that I made in putting this thing together. It was a while ago, remember? And I've learned a lot since then. And maybe I did some things right putting it together, but mostly we'll be examining my mistakes. Join me, you know, if you want to. You don't have to watch this video. The most obvious flaw with this thing is the overall shape of it. It's angular. The only non-right angle on this whole camper is the front slope that I put there for aerodynamic purposes. But aerodynamic, this thing is not. That's the biggest problem with this thing when towing it or hauling it on the back of my pickup is the aerodynamic. It's shaped like a friggin' brick. The weight's no problem, but that big sail up front is. So why didn't I put any rounded edges on it or corners or anything like that to break up the airflow? Well, because I didn't know how I was going to do that. So instead of figure it out, I just didn't. Great mentality, right? Thankfully I've moved on since then. The side edges of this front panel are sealed in with epoxy. So I don't expect this to be easy to remove. Maybe. Oh. oh, I forgot this is a separate panel down here. Yeah, to fill in these, these side edges here, I mixed uh, epoxy resin with a little bit of silica filler to thicken it up, and then I just slathered it on and covered it with fiberglass tape. And seems to have done the job well, but I can still remove it fairly easily. This is certainly interesting. I used double stick tape on these vertical struts here, but I didn't expose the adhesive. I guess I was using them as just a little bit of a dampener. Yeah, I, I left the adhesive protective strip on there. I don't know why I did that. Anyway. That's water damage. Not that it matters too much now because I'm taking it apart, but I did not make this roof strong enough to stand on without bowing in significantly, which made putting these roof panels in place in the first place rather challenging. But the biggest problem with this roof is the shape of it. I made it flat. I didn't put any slope to it. So unless I was parked on a hill, rainwater would just collect up here. And you might be able to see on the front edge there, the only thing I used to seal that the top of that front panel was just some weather stripping and silicone and some spray foam insulation. And clearly that did not do an adequate job because there's some rust underneath there. There we go. may have leaked a little bit of water around some of the screw holes and a little bit around this leading foam seal edge thing but one place it did not leak any water whatsoever is on these side edges here because that is sealed up with fiberglass that wrapped around the edge of the steel roofing panels which will also make it harder to remove the first iteration of these side walls was some horrible corrugated plastic panel that i used 
and they looked terrible almost immediately. So I wasn't happy with that, and I experimented for the second iteration, what you see here. This is foam board insulation panels covered in a thin layer of fiberglass. I think there's four sheets of foam board insulation in total, and I tucked the edges of the foam board underneath the edges of this window. I secured the edges with this aluminum angle you see here, and on the top edge is just fiberglass wrapped around. And if that wasn't enough, I glued, with construction of adhesive of some sort, the foam board panels themselves to the frame of the truck camper so it's secured in place. But one thing I wasn't so sure about when I installed this is, did I use enough fiberglass on the outside? But thankfully, since I'm tearing it apart now, I can test that. Now, as you can very clearly see in places like right here, I didn't worry about the aesthetics of this fiberglass panel too much. I just slapped down some fiberglass and then painted over it. I didn't use Bondo or sand it or anything like that because frankly, I didn't care. So you can still see raw fiberglass cloth in places like this. Okay, that's just one layer of fiberglass. I'm surprised how well that's holding up. Wow! I think that's strong enough. Holy crap, that's not giving. <laughs> You can see the wood frame I used to uh, hold this vent window in place. I couldn't mount anything directly to the foam, so I put in a little bit of wood there. <laughs> I carved my initials into the foam <laughs> and the year. 2017. Yay! So I think it's fair to say I'd categorize these foam fiberglass exterior panels as one of those things that I did right. Although I could have taken a lot more time to make it more aesthetically pleasing on the outside, either by coating it in Bondo and sanding that down, or by taking the time to sand down the fiberglass before painting it. Hey you! Hmm? Over here! Whoa. Who are you? I'm you. From the future. You're a sheep from the future? What? No, no, not a you from the future. I'm you from the future. Oh, I guess that makes a little more sense. Why are you wearing a wig? It's not a wig. This is your real hair in the future. Are you sure that's not a wig? Because it looks like a wig. It's not a wig. Okay, sorry. Jeez, looks like someone's a little grumpy in the future. Sorry, it's just, I know it looks fake, but it's my real hair. Anyway, I came here to tell you something very important. Is it that you like to wear terrible wigs? No, no, it's that... Two out of three men will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. Why are you telling me? My hair's as thick as mayonnaise. That's a gross choice of comparison. And I'm telling you because your hair is about to change. What? Nonsense. My hair's as thick as ev ev ever. What? See? I told you this isn't a wig. Your hair is falling out. What? Is there something I can do about it? I assume that's why you're here. Oh God. Well, you could set a building on fire and lock hundreds of people inside, including your wife, while it burns to the ground. What? It's a Norseman reference. Never mind. I guess you haven't seen that yet. You can use Keeps. What's that? Keeps is hair loss prevention. You can get treatment right at home. You get a doctor, you can message and everything. Well, I don't want to end up looking like that, so I better get right on this. Is it affordable? Sure is. Keeps uses generic versions of medications to help save you money. Found it. It's called Keeps, right? Get on that. Prevention is key. It can take four to six months or more to start seeing results. If you want to take action and prevent hair loss for yourself, go to keeps.com slash aging wheels for 50% off your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash aging wheels. Don't know who you're talking to there, but doesn't matter. Tell me more about my future other than just I'm going to lose my hair. What happens to me in the future? You can tell me so much. Uh, nope. Mirror time's expensive. Bye! Well, I guess I'm a jerk in the future. Wait, what if I'm a jerk now? Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video. I forgot that I did this, and I don't know why I did this, but I held in the inside window trim with double stick tape. Yeah, that had longevity in mind. <laughs> why did I do that? It's just stupid. By the way, while these solar panels were a fun and worthwhile addition to this project, 
It also insta-doubled the cost of the project. Not just the solar panels, but everything to go with it. The battery, the transformer, rather the inverter, all that stuff. These are heavier than I remember. Oh no, I left a screw in. Oh no, I left three screws in. This is fun on this plywood panel. I just noticed up here, I labeled it right for the right side, which is not that interesting, but I wrote it in German for some reason. One of the biggest mistakes I made with this project was my choice of exterior cladding. All this black stuff you see here is half inch thick plywood pressure treated plywood, a choice I made entirely out of ignorance because I thought, well, this plywood's going to be on the outside. It needs to be pressure treated, right? No, pressure treated doesn't mean it's waterproof. It means it won't rot when exposed to ground contact for a long period of time. This was a terrible choice of exterior cladding. For one, it arrived wet, so I installed it wet, and as it dried out, it shrank and ripped the screws out. And for another, it's not waterproof at all. A fact I discovered after I set this shell out before I started work on the interior, I set it out in the rain to see if and where it leaked. And it leaked all over because this stuff soaks up water. And when it's contacting a steel frame, that's no good. So that's why it's coated in bed liner now. That's why it's black, because I discovered, oh, this stuff isn't waterproof at all, like I should have known from the beginning. And uh, I coated it in bed liner to try to save face. But as I discovered from all the rust that's appearing on the steel frame bits, it wasn't enough. Not much rust under here, because it was shielded, but under here, there's a fair amount of rust where those panels were contacting the frame. There's a lot of rust coming out with these screws as I take them out. That's not a good sign. Fun fact about this air conditioner. I never used it, not even once. I never figured out a way to power it or I never had a way to power it without the use of a generator and I hate generators. So I never used it. It just sat there as an ugly ward on the back of my camper that it took several days worth of engineering to figure out how to install. Let's put one of these Harbor Freight drills to work. This fan, on the other hand, I used quite often, but it started malfunctioning and occasionally it would just not work. Great fan until it you know, doesn't work anymore. My choice of a cladding on the back, initially it was also that horrible looking corrugated plastic stuff, but it changed later on to this, which is PVC coated aluminum trim coil. It's not terrible and it was waterproof enough, but it just doesn't look good because it's all wrinkly. It's way too thin to be used for this sort of application unless I had a way to stretch it out before I installed it, which I didn't. So it just didn't look very good. Also, apparently I riveted it in place, so that's annoying. I think this door, which is probably going to prove to be very difficult to extract from here, was the single most expensive single component in this entire project. RV stuff isn't cheap, man, and I'm sure it's on, only gone up in price. Oh, yeah. Haha! -ha! See these weird pieces of thick OSB in here? They're just regular OSB on one side, but on the other side they're textured like siding and they're pre-painted, but they're on the inside of the wall. 
I know exactly why these are in here, because when I built this camper, I had next to no woodworking tools and next to no woodworking knowledge. And I needed something that was an inch thick to fill this gap and something that could be screwed into. And for some reason, the thought of combining two pieces of half inch plywood didn't cross my mind. So I happened to find these pieces of OSB siding material that were exactly an inch thick and that worked perfectly. So that's why this is in here. Wouldn't do that nowadays. I'd run it through the planer. Run a thicker piece through the planer to get a thinner piece. <laughs> or combine two pieces of half inch plywood. My choice of sealing material in here, I used fiberglass reinforced plastic. And it worked fine, there's nothing wrong with it. I just hated working with it. So now let's take it down so I can relive that hatred. <laughs> There are several places on this interior where I just left exposed screws without trim over them. That's just laziness, and I would not do that now. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to the inside of my lovely Home away from home. You'll have to excuse the mess in here. I just had the place demolished. Wouldn't have done that if I would have known I was going to have company over. That was ridiculous. Anyway, these seat cushions I made out of fabric with some seat cushion foam, but I backed them with plywood, which was an odd choice. And these are just pillows that I bought. Nothing special about them. It's a mess in here, you know? I actually was pretty proud of the interior of this thing, but I would not do it anything like I did it the first time. For instance, all of this wood grain looking stuff you see here, that's a vinyl wrap. I vinyl wrapped the wood instead of staining it or putting any sort of effort into it whatsoever. And you see there's white paint around the edges of these cabinet doors here, because I didn't know what else to do. So considering the knowledge that went into it, it came out pretty well. And of course, you can't forget the conspicuous roll of toilet paper in my living room because the toilet is right in here. Oh God, it has stuff in it. Ew. Ew. That's disgusting. These cabinets, I'm ashamed of these cabinets. I made them using only a circular saw and not once did I use an edge guide. So every single cut that went into making them is all kinds of wonky. And then I covered them in wood effect vinyl wrap, painted the outsides of the cabinet doors white for some reason, and that doesn't go well with the brushed nickel handles. And the shelves don't fit in there at all because I cut them so poorly so they would often fall down. I hate these cabinets, and I'm not sad to see them go. Hi! Oh, big panel. You can see I attach things on inside corners. I just put some strips of wood here, screwed to the steel frame, and I just screwed the panels to that. Very simple solution. Here's my little kitchen. I got my little bar sink here, a little hand soap dispenser that's velcro to the sink so it wouldn't throw around and it's incredibly rusty somehow and uh, down here the sink drains into this gray water bottle and the fresh water comes from a tank that's underneath the bench seat we'll get to that in a second and under here is just a little tiny bit of storage not really much and this one you can't store anything under here because there's no there's no bottom in this front part and i have some collapsible bags to fill up the water tank that I'm going to keep because I like these. Here's your proof, not that you needed it, but here's your proof of why you shouldn't use vinyl wrap on wood. See what the hinges did to it? Just peeled it right off. Also, this stuff shrinks over time and looks terrible. So there's that too. Hey! Ugh. This little feature down here I added, this little hatch is held on by magnets so I can easily access this extremely crookedly cut hatch down here so I could reach through and fasten down this truck camper inside the truck bed. I lined this area with more fiberglass reinforced plastic because this was my kitchen area. I didn't want it to get wet. I lined this area with carpet because it was my comfort area and I didn't want it to be uncomfortable. Let's try something. Ah, yes, I did succeed in leaving a footprint in the plywood. The cats are gonna love this. There we go. No. This little access hatch right here is another one of those little 
excess hatches I put in so I could reach into the underside of the truck camper to secure it down inside the truck bed. However, look at this hatch. Can you imagine a more imperfectly cut hole? I just went at it randomly with a jigsaw. Why did I do that? And to make matters worse, it's not sealed to the outside element. Granted, it's on the underside of the camper, so it doesn't matter a heck of a lot, but there's no ceiling and it's randomly cut. It's like this on both sides and I hate it so much. Underneath the bench and underneath this main hatch here, some of the main components of the camper, look how dirty this was. <laughs> it's the fresh water tank. You've got the water pump here that went to the sink and went to the little toilet sprayer. The toilet was sitting here on this little slide out section. I've got, I think, a 110 amp hour deep cycle AGM battery fuse for everything, uh, some smaller fuses for the 12 volt system. This is a fuse for, I think, the inverter. There's an inverter sitting right here. It's a thousand watt pure sine wave inverter. And one thing I never included with any of this solar or electrical setup is a way to charge this battery, not from solar. I should have used an inverter charger so I can charge it off AC power, but I never did. So the only way I ever had to charge this battery, aside from hooking a car battery charger up to it, was through the solar panels. So when I moved this camper inside, this battery slowly died because it had no way of being charged and that battery is completely dead now. Getting down to pretty well bare bones now, so I'm just gonna power through it, take my Ryobi and my Milwalk and go to town. N not literally. The bare frame. I mean, yeah, there's still quite a bit of crap left stuck on here, but ignore that for now. The bare frame. If I had to build this frame all over again, there's not a heck of a lot I would do differently. I think this is part of the truck camper build that I got the most right. I mean, sure, if I were to do it over again, I, would, I wouldn't use one inch square steel tubing for the whole thing. I would use wider stuff like two by one square steel tubing for more important bits like this roof bar, this bit over door and some other pieces. I would add some reinforcing gussets to some of the important corners like that one down there where there's a lot going on but not a lot of reinforcement. And I'd add more structure to the roof. I don't know why I left it so barren, but I did. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how this frame turned out. Especially since, if I remember correctly, this was my first real welding project. Quite a big project for my first one. Up here in the nose of the camper, you can see this little bit here is doubled up. That's because initially the camper's nose was only supposed to come out this far because initially I intended for the bed to go down here in the main body of the camper and this was just going to be a, an aerodynamic addition with some extra storage up here. But at some point before the build was finished and before I'd ever even used it, I decided that no, I wanted the bed up here, so I added two feet to the front of the camper, hence this doubled up section and some other oddities up here. And then I moved the bed up here and down there was just a bench for sitting on. <clears throat> oh! Hey, oh, oh, so many spiders under there. I just had my hands under there. suitable that the last board to take off would hurt me. I have one task left. Chop this frame all to bits using my bandsaw and separate into two piles, to keeps and to scraps. Give me 
me that blade back. Uh-oh, I think I ruined it. Well, there's more than one way to skin a cat. It's a terrible phrase, you know that? By the way, a company called Snapfresh sent me this for review. Well, I don't review tools, but um, I've been using this reciprocating saw for several months. I use it to cut down a tree. It works. Is that a review? I've got a philosophical question for you. At what point did or does this truck camper stop existing? Okay, this thing is toasty. I'm sure a lot of you are wondering how I could so carelessly rip apart something that I spent months of my life dreaming about and building from scratch. Well, it's because I'm a cold hard bitch. Because it was the building of this thing that was the journey, not the end result. If I just wanted the end result, I would have bought a cheap truck camper off of Craigslist. But that wouldn't have been any fun. Sure, it would have saved me a lot of money over what it cost to build this thing, but it would have been no fun at all. I wanted to build a large scale project and the thought of building a truck camper or having a truck camper presented an opportunity to put something together that was real big and real complicated. And I seized that opportunity and built a truck camper. Sure, the end result wasn't fantastic, it was kind of ugly, and it was terrible to drive with. And sure, I only used it on two trips. One of them was fairly big, but I only used it on two trips. But this thing fully served its purpose. I got to build a big old project that was a lot of fun. And that's why I don't regret tearing it apart whatsoever, and I feel not at all bad about it because this thing served its purpose, and now it was just in the way. And apparently I had a lot of issues with water ingress. <laughs> Look at all the rust on this piece. This truck camper only sat outside for a year. It's been in here for at least a year. So anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.